My guest today is the visual visionary behind some of the biggest music videos ever created. From Ariana Grande to Halsey, Demi Lovato, Little Mix, Sofia Carson, BB Rex, so the list goes on and on, and she's garnered millions of fans across the world and millions of views across many platforms. She's Hannah Lux Davis, and this is Jason Unleashed. Hannah Lux Davis, welcome to Jason Unleashed. Good to see you. Hi, good to see you. Thank you for having me. Of course. I, I can't believe the last time I actually talked to you virtually was over a year ago. You were my second guest of season one of Jason Unleashed. Now we're here a year later. Like, what a difference a year makes. What a difference a year makes. I remember for that, I like it was my first time putting on makeup. Like, I'm not even kidding. And I felt like it was so bizarre. I was like, I was wearing eyeliner and I remember I was wearing like really crazy lashes and they took me so long to do that I like didn't have time to do my hair. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm like, uh, well, lashes and that's it. <laughs> uh, hey, you, at least I got a lash. I'll take it. Well, oh my gosh. So I, I fully remember that feeling and getting ready for that. And I was like, this is so weird. Like, it's just like, everything's virtual. And now we're just like, we're parked in front of our computers for Zoom every day now. Uh, isn't it, it's, it's right. ridiculous, Hannah. Like, I wanna break up with my computer. I have a love-hate relationship with my computer because I get up in the morning, it's the first place I go. And it's the yeah. last place I'm at at the end of the day. And I'm thinking like, what's, what's become of our life? But with that said, 2020, Hannah, you were busy as hell. I mean, we got videos from David Guetta, Marshmello, Demi Lovato, uh, Doja Cat. I mean, VMA nominations. Yeah. And a time where we thought that the thriving was going to no longer be thriving and stop. You continue to pursue and kill it. How are you feeling? I mean, 2020 was the busiest year I ever had. <laughs> I did so many projects that year, including like a week long uh, project with Quibi that has not been released yet, obviously, because Quibi is no longer. Um, but yeah, it was such a crazy time and the uh, for obvious reasons, but figuring out how to work with masks and the, and the testing and everything being so virtual up until like the shoot day. Uh -huh. um, yeah, it was very intense, but um, 2021 feels completely different. Right. Um, so, yeah. yeah. Well, with that said, though, so, okay, you know, we were stuck in our homes for a year. You being the creative that you are, how did last year influence the visuals that we're getting now? How have you changed? Because a lot of people are coming out of this emerging, like, completely different people and also figuring out things about themselves they didn't even yeah. know they had to deal with or that they were capable of for yourself, Hannah. What did yeah. you learn about yourself last year? And how has that, how has that influenced what you're doing now? Great question. I mean, I definitely feel like it's... When you have, okay, when you have other things going on, like you can go out to dinner and you can go on a trip for the weekend and you can do all these things outside of your work. And so you can have, you know, the separation, but when you don't have the separation and you're not able to travel and do things, all you really have that's different from your like day-to-day -day life is the work. So what I found that like, I think now thinking back on last year, I'm like, I am going to be much pickier about projects. And I think that I'm not just going to jump on everything right. because at the end of it, it was like, I was so busy. I was so stressed. And I definitely, this year I was able, 2020, I was able to handle stress better than I was in 2019. Right. 2019 was like, I was so stressed out one day in 2019 that I couldn't even speak. Like wow. I literally didn't have a voice. Like my voice was gone. I, didn't, I couldn't say anything. I was like mute for the day. It was very scary. And so in 2020, I, I was, I took every job because we didn't know what was going to happen. Right. And so we were like, we're going to take every job that comes our way because we didn't know what like the future was going to hold. And then now I'm like, okay, well that is not like, that does not bring any sort of like happiness just being right. that busy. So now I'm like, all right, how do I connect with the project? Obviously there's like those money jobs that you have to like, Sure. you gotta like, eat yeah you gotta <laughs> eat you gotta pay for the, all the things you gotta maintain that lifestyle right right and so um yeah now i'm just trying to be like okay how do i fit into this project and how can i like how can i best serve the project and have it serve me so it feels like i'm not just a slave to the work you know 100 percent. i think so many people probably watching right now resonate with like putting yourself first right because 
we're all traumatized. Let's keep it 100, Hannah. We have been traumatized by COVID yeah. and quarantine and what, and just, and on top of civil unrest, racism, everything that 2020 threw at us was just like, what in the actual fuck is going on? Yeah. But I feel you on that 100%. Um, so let's talk about the work though, because Hannah, you have been at behind the lens of the most popular, like billions of views, sought after, celebrated videos and music, I would say of this generation, of this generation. You. you are up there That's with nice the- of you. But, but it's the truth though, the numbers speak for themselves and the work speaks for itself. I mean, I know someone you're inspired by is um, Flores Sages Mondi. I would compare what you're doing to your artistry to someone of that caliber. Oh, thank you. Recently, Killing the Game with Sophia Carson, Fool's Gold, Fool's Gold. I mean, I've seen your evolution as a video director and as a, and as a cinematographer elevate in the last year. Again, what has inspired that? Like, how how is Hannah Lux Davis evolving and emerging as a new woman in her craft? Yeah, that's a great question. I feel like every job I had these crazy huge learning lessons, and usually they're about how I communicate something on set and how I want to like, you know, just really just sort of elevate every moment, of course, but how I communicate to the team. And so much of the job as a, of a director is to be able to communicate your vision, communicate your ideas, communicate to the talent, communicate to the producer, to the agency, to the artist, anybody like to the to the stylist, all these people you need to communicate your vision to. And I find that, you know, it's just gathering your thoughts and not just jumping to a conclusion or jumping to the first thing that comes to your mind but saying, hey, I need to think about this. Let me get back to you. Mm -hmm. Like even just like owning that and like having that agency just to be like, you know what, let me get back to you after I put some real thought into this right. so I can give you a really great response. And I think that is something that I think has elevated the work. And I think that, you know, I think my taste level has, you know, evolved and grown over the years. Um, of course, I still have some things that I absolutely love, you know, like there's styles and, you know, I love things to look beautiful and glossy, mm -hmm. um, but sometimes like simple is better. And I'm, and I'm learning that um, I'm also learning how to deal with, with not deal with, but like work with artists um, of different needs and different wants and concerns and how to better communicate the plan of what we're shooting before they get on set. Or if there is something that comes up on set that may, um, you know, disrupt them in a way that like, oh, this is not what I was thinking. Like, how do I then handle that situation that may come up? And how do I, you know, make them feel like, oh, I, okay, now I get it. I see it. Thank you for explaining that to me. And it is such every job. It's like you learn all these crazy learning lessons. And I never know what that big lesson is going to be until like after the shoot. But right. it's, but, it's pretty but, crazy. <laughs> that's life though. I mean, T Hannah, the tapestry of your artistry and creativity is so evident. I mean, recently with uh, Doja Cat and BB Rexa, you talk about colors mm -hmm. and, um, you know, just opposing that from Marshmello and Demi or, or David Guetta and Sia. Mm -hmm. Every... Oh. That video, David Guetta, Sia, I feel like that one just like, I don't know who saw that video, but I, I it's like, it's like fell off. I have no idea what happened to that video. That video was so hard to make. Why? Like, it was just, it was so many moving pieces. It was, a, it was two nights, two, it was huge cast. It was like a narrative. So there was no like performance to like cut to to sort of like patch things up. And it was just a lot of big moving pieces. And the artist wasn't on set, David Guetta, neither was Sia, the commissioner wasn't on set. And so, which was fine, obviously it's, you know, sometimes it's nice just to like go and not be like stopped and like, you know, all that. But I think that it was just one of those projects that was just so massive and we were trying to tell a story in such a short amount of time. And um, and the, the effects at the end were just so, so much. And, and I think it was one of those videos that I loved making and then mm -hmm. I feel like nobody, watched it. I don't know. I feel like it didn't get the buzz I thought it was going to get. Right. Isn't that interesting, Hannah, how like, I mean, you, oh God, okay, so many of your videos, like, thank you, next. Um, I mean, uh, I, you have so many, it's hard to even like pinpoint because they're so incredible. But like, you know, um, okay, High Horse, Casey Musgraves, yeah. which is one of my favorite of yours. Love that one. These videos, these videos, they have, they, there's, there's such a story there and you, and, and you have the vision you know what's gonna resonate. Like, it's a labor of love, right? You don't just yeah. arrive on a set and say, okay, look, I'm Hannah Lux Davis, let me just direct this video. No, you have treatments. You, you It's a whole story you have to tell. It's, it's and for story. it to not, you know, there's so many videos in, in the past from artists that you're like, what did they make this video? And it's so good and it's a shame, it's a crime that yeah. more people don't jump behind it. What do you, why do you think that is? 
Um, you know, sometimes it has to do with the rollout or the single, or I think that there wasn't an artist in the video it may have had something to do with it. You know, like mm -hmm. people want to tune in and see David Guetta. They want to tune in and see Sia. And I think that when the artists aren't there, um, I don't know. I, I'm really not sure. And I yeah. don't, listen, I love David Guetta and I love every collaboration you've done, but maybe the song just didn't hit as hard. Right. I never really follow up too, too much on like the how and the why things don't end up. Um, and to be honest, usually I work with songs that are like hits, you know, like right. Ruby Rex and Doja, like that was such a fun one. Um, and yeah, so I think with that one, I was just more surprised that it didn't get, I don't know, yeah. as much as much love because I but, love it. But, but it doesn't it doesn't take away or extract from the actual quality and what we're watching because it was a stunning video. Do you when you get that email, Hannah, from like a commissioner or from a label mm -hmm. or from an artist directly, like Demi Lovato reaching out to you and be like, hey. I want you to direct me at my house party for um, Sorry Not Sorry. Do you like stop and be like, who me? Like me? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, all the time. And I still roll up to set and I see all the trucks and the equipment rolling in. And I'm just like, I'm like, this is all for this shoot. Like, I'm still like starstruck that it's like a big production when I show up. Yeah. Um, I I, I mean, like you know, and you're you're very hands on with your with your art. I mean, you're you're in you're in the coloring bays. You're behind the scenes. You you touch every single facet from from fashion to style to the look to the energy yeah. to the how, to the actual energy on set. You create such a great working environment. Is there what is is there one video, Hannah, where you're editing or you're watching it and you get a little emotional, thinking like, "Wow, I helped create this. I helped bring this to life." Yeah, um, there was one. Because from time to time, and I don't know if other directors do this, but from time to time, I'll go back and I'll watch the videos I've done. Like, I'll just like watch like six in a row because truly I'm like, I have to have like a gut check because when you're in the moment and right. you're and you're like in the deadline and you're in the thick of it all. And it's like, and there's so many things and needs and wants that like have to go into get, get in the video delivered. Sometimes, obviously when I'm editing, I have to like think about, you know, do I feel it? Is it working? Is it good? Of course. But the real like step away and like, you know, the thir like 30,000 foot view of it all. I'm like, sometimes I'll go back and I'll watch videos just to like have that gut check. And I think I actually want to open up my website just to like. <laughs> I love it. You're like, hold on, let me open up just my to website. Just refresh, because I did just watch stuff recently and I was like, oh God, that one was a lot better than like, I mean, Higher Love is just uh, one of those videos yes. where I'm I like, go in Houston, yeah. I mean, yeah. That video, to me, when I watched that, I'm like, I am so lucky that I was able to make a video for that. Like, that's the first response. Like, and me and the, and the choreographer, um, who I collaborate with all the time, Danny Vitale, who's a dear friend of mine, we, because I was, that was the 2019 when I was so stressed out, I couldn't talk. That was back then. <laughs> and so true. that was one of the videos in the clump of that, like, crazy run of jobs. Mm -hmm. And I, and like, sometimes I'll reach out to her and I'm like, I cannot believe we were able to do a video for that song. Like an, an, an epic dance video that right. like, and I knew that one was gonna be amazing, obviously, cause the song was so good, but I went to the dance rehearsals for that. And I, it was like, and I was like, you guys, the dancers are the star of this video. And I would tell them that as they were rehearsing, I'm like, you guys are the star of this video. And like, I could just see them just like, so like buzzing with just like this real, like, endearing enthusiasm it was so fun to watch and be a part of like even just the rehearsals oh. and then you know when we put the video together and we had this really beautiful color palette and the color grade and the art and the wardrobe everything just felt so authentic mm -hmm. and like we were really creating something that just felt so different from any music video that I had really seen in terms of like the look and feel and like, the tone of it all and not having any like you know, no, having, you know, Kygo wasn't in it for a cameo. So it really feels so timeless mm -hmm. um, at the same time of it also feeling like a period piece. But I watched that one back and I'm like, that story we told and like the dancing and the choreography, it just really tugs at the heartstrings for me. Yeah. So that's and I mean, it's, it's like also just the song is so, I mean, the song is so oh, good, right? Like, what's that? The song, the song is such a generational song that I mean, yeah. it came out, it came on, it came out in the '80s, and then like we here we have this reinterpretation, this reimagination for a newer generation yeah. that is being exposed to how great music was back in the day. Do you have a bucket list though, Hannah? I mean, I've, yeah. you've worked with everybody, every. I mean, not everybody. I but, but I do have like a list that I'm like I cannot wait to work with Dua Lipa, uh -huh. oh yeah, Gomez, Rihanna. Like those are three that I'm like really itching to work with. 
Right. And then and there's I, other artists who's kind of newer, um, not that new, but like, she's kind of like, I don't know, un, not underground, but she's kind of like pop rock. Uh -huh. Maggie Lindemann is her sure. name. Yeah. I mean, of course you know her, but like, I think she's just phenomenal and I love pop rock and I think she's super cool. Well, you, when, when we think of strong females in the business, people, I mean, people, especially music videos, the per, one of the first people they say is Hannah Lux Davis, because you have definitely created this, this environment, this universe, this um, existence for women to be powerful, for women to be, to stand the sexuality, for women to, to have a, to make a video about, hey, break up with your, your boyfriend because I'm bored. Like you have ushered in. Yeah. That was another video that I feel like was like kind of under the radar because of Seven Rings and Thank You Next. Right. But I mean, Hannah, you're 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 changing the game, and I don't and like you know I don't I'm, I'm sure you know this, but I just want to reiterate, and especially because you have so many people who would agree with me that you have given females and music a voice again, if that makes sense. You know what I mean? Like especially yeah. this older generation, because I feel like with social media and everything that we have to communicate, it also drowns out and kind of um, dilutes. Mm -hmm. messages because we're so inundated all the time that it's we miss so things. much it's right so much. i long for the days back i mean obviously times are so different so i can't say i long for the days but like <laughs> i remember when i was growing up and trl was like everything uh -huh. that's when that's the only time you could go and check in and see what your artists were doing right you know, like on their music videos like what's their hair how are they what clothes are they wearing like sure. what's the, what's the look and that you would have to tune into their music video to see what they were up to and i just think the you know, I think the power of the music video back then was just so insane. Now it's, you're right. It's like you get, you see your artists all the time, um, you know, but I think that something that is now more than it was before is that artists are, I think, way more involved in the making mm -hmm. of their own videos. So I think they are a bit more personal um, and they're also being made more so by their peers. Right. I think as before the generation of directors were much older than the artist, you know? And now it's like a lot of these people making the videos are like the same age and like, you know what I mean? Like it's, yeah. it's much, it's much closer. Right. Um, you don't have, you don't have like a, like a Stefan said now or someone who's like 10, 15 years older than, than the artist yeah. making a it video. It was a lot of white guys directing <laughs> right. pop videos, you know? And now it's like, it's such like a mix of directors. Like the, I think directing pools are just so much more diverse. Mm -hmm. So I think you're able to get like a lot of you know, different looks and feels and, and stories being told, which is for awesome. sure. Well, I mean, with that said, Hannah, from music video, uh, from music video, you know, feature film. I love that you're such a music video buff and you oh. love all the names. Hannah. Like, it like really warms my heart. <laughs> I can't, Hannah, you, we, like, I was the biggest Paul Hunter and the oh, biggest hype. Paul Hunter. Dave Myers, his gloss. Yeah. The, yeah. the the Dave Myers yeah. when Dave Myers gave you the Dave Myers treatment in a video, yeah. like you his knew pink videos were so epic. Pink was incredible, yeah. but also if he, but like you know, also with the Francis Lawrence who yeah. who was so sometimes his videos were a little too dark. It was like, who am I looking at? Like, where's Jay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, but, but I love Francis Lawrence videos. Same, same. Yeah. I mean, when he directed um, Constantine, I was like, finally, yeah, dude, you pivot and give us a feature film. But with that, Hannah Lux yeah. Davis feature yeah. film, I see Oscar in oh, your future gosh. when well, when thank you uh yeah film is definitely the next thing for me i'm like i have a few projects that i'm attached to i'm like it's so it's such a different process and it's a different mm -hmm. world um like completely and i that's something that i've done a lot you know you asked the question of like how is your 2021 like how did your 2020 like change me oh it changed me i i mean yes you know, I, my work sure is evolving, but like, like I was saying, I really want to focus on, you know, picking the right things and, and creating more time for myself to focus on things like feature films. Cause right. that is the goal. And obviously music videos are always going to be a part of what I do. It's like, it's my first love and my bread and butter, I'd say of my brand as a director, sure. but I really, really, really want to you know, start making some serious moves into the future of film scripted world. It'll so happen. I have projects that I'm attached to. It's just so hard to get the ball rolling. And like, right. and nowadays, I think, and, and listen, I'm not like an expert in this, obviously, but I think <laughs> nowadays it's much harder to get greenlit. Um, and you sure. have to package a project, like a bigger, it has to be a full blown package. It's not necessarily like, oh, we'll take a chance on this first time director with this script. Um, great, let's go out to cast. Nope, you have to have the cast. You have to have all these things. You have to have, 
you know, there's stunts in it. Let's get a stunt coordinator, a part of that package. It's, if they're not necessarily, you know, like taking chances without like a bigger package already right. formed is right. what I am finding and I'm being told. <laughs> well, but, yeah. You, I, I mean, it's, I, I can't imagine living in a world where you haven't manifested that next big thing because I mean, your breath and your body of work, it speaks for itself. Uh, is You talk about yourself and your career, but how has Hannah Lux Davis, how has HLD, also elevated her self-care because strip if you strip all this away yep all you have is you yep I mean I can definitely say that I well some things that I took up in 2020 which I never thought I would do two main things one I started running cool I'm a runner now <laughs> and um the second um and then I had a goal to run I, like my peak running was in November of 2020 and I ran 100 miles in the month Nice. That was like my goal, which is not that crazy. I, I know for, I have friends who do it like every month, but it was hard for me. And then um, the other thing is taking baths. <laughs> I did not take baths before. I would only be like a shower girl. And now I'm like, oh, I'm going to take a bath and like have a bath bomb and like do the whole thing. And that was something that I loved. I love it. Um, <laughs> and then now that like things are getting like really busy again, like I'm kind of like, it's so funny. I go through like seasons of like, okay, work is slow. And then everything is all at once. And I'm definitely gearing up to the everything all at once moment. And now I'm like, I know that I need weekends, like right. weekends. I need right. to reset. I need to recharge. I need to literally just like either veg out and do nothing, or I need to like be social with friends. Like I can't just be like, seven days a week anymore like I used to be able to do now it's yeah. like I have to have that like me time to recharge it's balance it's balance if Hannah what do you say to the young girl right here that may be from Bellevue Washington that grew up playing sports that has sisters that 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 their parents dropped a camera in her in her in her in her in her lap and said hey you better be good at something what do you yeah. say to that what do you say to that girl well it's yeah. so funny. It's like, I say, well, I mean, yes, you have to find your thing. And I'm glad that I found, I started to find that thing when I was in high school. Um, and don't stop doing it. I mean, I, I know I, I didn't stop doing it. Um, I don't know. I don't know what I would say. I would just say, lay off of my space. You don't need to be <laughs> on my space so much. <laughs> I was on MySpace all the time. Babe. I mean, yeah, I don't know. That's cool. That's cool. Hannah Lux Davis, you are the future. You're incredible. We, we, we are not worthy. We don't deserve you. But what we do deserve, <laughs> what we keep watching are the damn good freaking videos because I binge the shit out of your playlists on YouTube. And there's so many. There's, there's, there's a lot. Hannah. There is yeah. one playlist with 50 videos. I thought, what piece of, wants me to sit here? But I watched at least 25 of them because your work is that great. And you, oh, you're, kill, you're you. killing the game. And I'm so happy to have had you on Jason Unleashed. Where can we find you online? And where can we get everything Hannah Lux Davis? Thank you. Yeah, I'm on Instagram at Hannah Lux Davis, H-A-N-N-A-H. -H. And um, yeah, mainly just Instagram. Boom. You can check Hannah out my work at HannahLuxDavis.com.